Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun painting today for our water ocean theme. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on my traceable, I went over it with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to pause the video and draw what you see. If you're utilizing the traceable, you do not have to go over it with the black marker. Now you get your choice. We're actually going to use a light teal. We could use light blue if you want and just demonstrated a few different brush strokes, the Y, the skinny, and the X marks. Um, so give those a try. And we're gonna be filling in the background and we are gonna work on a lot of wet on wet blending and brush control today. So if you have to mix your color a second or third time and maybe it's a little bit darker like I just did, don't stress about getting the exact same shade every time. Um, having some variety in your background is going to be to your benefit and it's nice to blend and mix the paint while it is still wet. So again, we're going to be filling in that background, going right up to those traceable lines. If you're on a stretched canvas, I do recommend carrying the color around the sides of the canvas. And if you need to, turn the canvas sideways, upside down, whatever you need to do um, as you are filling in this space. If you happen to be using student grade paint that's on the thin side or dries really quickly, I do recommend that you apply your paint a little bit thicker um, so that way it stays wet a little bit longer and we can do some of the blending that we need. If you have super, super uh, fast drying paint, maybe just work in smaller sections, but you can still follow along and um, observe what you see and then kind of apply that to your background. So coming along, getting that last bit of our background filled in, and then we're going to start slapping some colors on top of it. Now the background, this is still wet paint, and then when we go to slap the other colors, we're going to go from teal, um, we're going to throw some blue on there, and we'll even throw some white. And you can see where I just literally slap it on the background, and then you can wipe that brush off, and then with light pressure, you go back and you blend it directly into the base. This is called wet on wet blending. And it's really a lot of fun, especially for my people that have never painted before. It's just kind of get comfortable, use that light pressure so you can kind of see how the colors mix together, um, what your pressure will do, a little more pressure, uh, makes them mix a little bit more, a little light pressure. You can be a little more subtle. And you're just building your painting knowledge as you go through this process. So. All right, so you do want to do everything that you want to your background and then pause the video, um, take your progress photo. If you need to, if you got some of your background on the inside of your shark, I'm just taking a clean brush with water and just wiping off that pigment on the inside of the shark. Um, so feel free to clean anything that you need to or just let it dry and you could paint right on top of any acrylic paint that got on there. So we're going to make a light gray that is white with a little bit of black and your gray may be a little lighter or darker than mine. Totally okay. And we're going to fill in the top section of the shark and we are using that medium flat brush. If you need to use the small pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. And we're going right over those traceable lines and filling in this top half. We will be adding some darker gray and even some white to this and doing more of that wet on wet blending. So with today's painting, you're just going to get a little more comfortable with your brush control and with your wet on wet blending. If you are one of my beginner painters, or even if you've been painting for a while and you realize you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale. You're doing a great job. So here, now we're just applying that white, and I am being pretty heavy-handed with the white. And I want you to observe where I place it, mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. Um, and then we're going to wipe off that brush, and then with that light pressure, we're going to blend this white into that base of the gray. And you will notice that it starts to change um, the shade of the gray. So uh, light pressure, and if you need to, you can kind of see at a few points that I am holding my brush at like a 45 degree angle. This helps me keep it a little more smooth and not have my brush strokes show up. Now we're gonna make a medium gray, and that's just adding a little bit more black to your gray mixture. 
Again, we're going to place it in a few specific areas, then I'll wipe that brush off and we're going to blend that into the base gray. Again, if yours looks a little bit darker or lighter than mine or you're using different colors, totally okay. So here, going back with that brush, light pressure, you can make little dots to kind of do the blending, a little stippling effect, or you can kind of drag your brush um, into that base with light pressure. The more that you paint, the more you're comfortable you'll get with the pressure of your brush, as well as mixing um, your paint. So going for a dark gray, again, just a little bit more black to the mixture. And if it is close to black, that's okay. That tail would be in a bit of a shadow. And we're going to put those um, gill lines in there. At least the first one. I think we come back and do that. Sorry about that. But do pause your video at various points. Take your progress photo. And we're going to make a light, light, light gray for this next one. So I'm pulling some of that white aside. A little bit of gray because this is his underbelly that is generally um, a much lighter color than the top portion of his body. And we're filling in um, that belly the fins, um, that nostril underneath there. And if you happen to get a little bit into um, the darker, the lighter gray on the top, that's okay. You do want to make sure you go over all those traceable lines. Um, and then when we get to the outlining part, it is optional if you want to outline it or not. And there you can see I actually switched down to the small pointy brush, grab some of the excess paint from the medium flat brush um, to be able to cover all of those lines. Again, remember to breathe. You guys are doing great. So now we're going for a light gray and just adding a little bit more um, gray to that light, light, light gray that we were using. Again, just go a few shades darker than you were just using. And again, observe where I'm placing this and mimic it to the best of your ability on your canvas. You do have full permission to trust your instincts. If you're inclined to put a shadow or a highlight value where I do not put it, go ahead and trust that. That is how you uh, develop your own creative style. And then we're going to go in with a bit darker, um, a medium gray. And this is going to be in a few select areas where it would just be a little bit darker. And these are subtle shades of gray that we are adding. Again, does not have to be perfect. I do recommend that you look at your painting from a distance of 5 to 10 feet away. That is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially for artwork and assess it from that distance. Here going a little bit darker for the opening of the mouth and you will want to let that dry. Pause the video, let your painting dry, take your progress photo. And then we're going to move into the black outline and some of the details. We're going to get that nostril in there. We're going back to those gills. Um, we're going to put the eyeball in there. And if you want to do the outline, you can. If you don't want to, you do not have to. As you're working with these lines, mind the pressure, light pressure will um, keep a skinnier line, a little bit more pressure is going to be a little bit um, wider lines. And again, first time doing your outlines or doing some of these lines, be kind to yourself if you have varying widths of lines in your painting. All right, so taking that white, we're going to do a few highlights um, on the sides of the gill. Again, use your power of observation as to where I place it. Then we're going to do a little catch light in the eyeball, which is just going to be a dot of white. And then the all-important um, teeth, which are, because this is a small canvas, they're just basically lines. If you have a bit bigger canvas, you can make little triangles for your teeth with the point of the triangle um, kind of pointing up towards the nose and the eye. If you want to put a little red blood on your teeth or a little um, blood going into the water, feel free to make this what you want. And if you want to outline your shark, you can. Um, I do that in some of my other videos. Did not do that in today's video. Again, completely optional. Uh, no matter what video of mine that you're using, you are strengthening your power of observation. So pause the video as you need to. Observe where a, per a color was placed and then just mimic that to the best of your ability. That is a core foundational art concept is strengthening your power of observation. So thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to get creative with me. I'm honored that you're painting and that you're hanging out. And until next time, cheers.
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope how you liked how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing those. I try to post them on social media um, and encourage other beginners and first time painters to try painting. So please share this with your community and keep getting creative. If you have any comments, feedback, suggestions, things you want me to paint in the future, go ahead and leave a comment and I will um, answer them as quickly as I can and try to get those new paintings um, in my production list and on the rotation. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to get creative with me. Don't wait too long to do your next one. And until then, cheers.